The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. I'm Brittany Warner with realagriculture.com and welcome to another episode of Pulse School. For today's episode, we are talking about a brand new technology that is yet to hit Canada. Now it is being tested currently over in Australia and I'm talking about the brand new green on green technology. Now you might have heard of a green on brown technology and this is similar. However, they have up the ante in several different regards. Uh, to get the inside track on this green on green technology, we caught up with a Tom Wolf. He is the owner of Agrometrics Research and Training based out of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. All right, Tom, so talk to me a little bit about green on green technology. First and foremost, what is it? Well, uh, green on green technology is just a way of uh, finding weeds amongst a crop. So it differentiates plants that are crop or desirable from those that are weeds that are not desirable and then selectively can trigger a nozzle to spray just the weeds. Right. And this isn't the first time we're seeing this type of technology. What was the uh, precursor to green on green technology? Yeah, we've had green on brown technology for probably 20 years or more, which is a, a technology that doesn't use, you know, regular cameras. It uses sort of a light reflectance technology uh, detecting green color through NDVI or uh, maybe chlorophyll and can't differentiate between crops and weeds. It just says, okay, it's green, let's spray it. So that's more used for burn off. Right, absolutely. Now, what is the advantage, besides the obvious, but what is the advantage of the green on green technology? It's a huge advantage. Uh, so imagine being able to spray, you know, weeds that occur in patches, just the patches, and having that, that capability. The big problem with uh, getting sort of precision into the spraying operation is that the maps we create are difficult to create because you have to walk a whole field to find out where the weeds are. And also, uh, the maps don't last very long because there's a seasonality and a, a, a different uh, emergence pattern every year. A uh, green on green uh, has solved that problem by generating the map instantaneously and just saying, okay, if this is a weed, let's spray it. It's right here and it's right now. You could probably use a map afterwards and find out you know, whether you've got patches and things like that. But it, it has been a, a real breakthrough to do that in crop. Not everyone does a pre-seed burn off. Mm -hmm. Not everyone sprays post-harvest, but almost everyone sprays in crop. And we broadcast spray plants or fields rather that uh, may have patchiness and all, you know, weeds are typically patchy. Absolutely. And we were also talking before that um, this can also save producers and farmers on the products that they're using because they're pinpointing where they're spraying it a lot better uh, than traditional spraying. Yeah, I think that's the biggest and perhaps most obvious advantage is being able to save product. And especially in times of product scarcity and higher costs, that's important. But I think what's even more important is sort of a longer term view. And that is by having significant savings and those savings could be 50% or 70%. That's what's been floating around in the, in the test space. Um, we can perhaps afford to use more targeted modes of action and better tank mixing. So for example, if we're fighting a resistant weed or a weed that has potential to develop resistance, we will want to target that with at least two effective modes of action. And that means the tank mixes are getting more expensive. Mm -hmm. and that has been a big deterrent. So for example, if you can do a burn off, say for five or ten dollars per acre why would you use a burn off for 30 just to protect yourself against the future possibility of resistance well with this kind of technology that kind of investment in a tank mix is practical it's affordable and it probably protects your land for some years to come from the development of that resistance absolutely um and then where does it best fit in broad acre farming well i think it's a it, it has a a natural uh uh, I guess benefit for not just the, the bottom line of farming and the planning for resistance but also the image of farming. It has a natural fit because it's very clear to anyone who watches this that by spot spraying the weeds only um, we are being better stewards we're not broadcast, we're not drenching the landscape in pesticides. We're strategically and surgically applying pesticides only where they're needed. And I think that's a very good messaging for, for farming in general. Great. Thanks so much, Tom, for joining us today.